As Ankara rolled its tanks into Syria, clashes broke out between police and protesters at an anti-war rally in the German city of Cologne. <laughs> Thousands of people showed up at that demonstration demanding Ankara's withdrawal from Syria's Afrin region, where Turkey is carrying out what it calls an anti-terrorism operation. At some point, police stopped the gathering after banned Kurdish militia flags appeared. A similar demonstration was also held in London. The protests come as seven civilians were reportedly killed in a recent Turkish airstrike. Here are the latest pictures we've received from the ground. They show the aftermath of that attack. And it's feared that the airstrikes may have claimed even more lives with people believed to be trapped under rubble. Witnesses claim the Turkish aerial bombardments are targeting residential areas. There are no military zones here. All of them are civilian areas. The civilians were asleep. There was nothing. But they bombed us, even though there are no soldiers here. We are all civilians. The shell fell about 25 metres away. Shrapnel ended up in my hand. I wanted to know why they were shelling civilians. Well, Turkey says that it's conducting an anti-terror operation against Kurdish militia in Afrin. The offensive is supported by several anti-Syrian government groups. The areas they hold are marked on our map in green. The Turkish military claims that almost 400 Kurdish and ISIL fighters have been killed since the start of their operation. The UN, those raising concern, claiming 5,000 people have fled the area since the conflict started. Nevertheless, the Turkish leader has repeatedly vowed to expand the operation and most recently claimed that it would be extended all the way to the Iraqi border. We are going to continue the olive branch operation until we achieve our goals. And then, as promised, we will clear Manbij of terrorists. After that, we will continue our struggle up to the Iraqi border until no terrorists are left. Well, President Erdogan says that Turkey will push onwards to the city of Manbij and then further to the east towards the Iraqi border. The move would not only mean an all-out offensive against the Syrian Kurds, but could also threaten U.S. personnel who are stationed in the area. The Turkish foreign ministers urged the U.S. to immediately withdraw from Manbij. Well, American troops have been assisting the local Kurds in their anti-ISIL operation, with a Pentagon official recently announcing the creation of a 30,000-strong border security force in the region. Now, this was to be comprised largely of Kurds, something that infuriated Ankara, and it prompted it to launch that attack on Kurdish positions in Syria. US Secretary of State Rex Tillerson later backtracked, though, on the idea. He said that officials had misspoken and that the plans had actually been misrepresented. Anti-war activist Richard Becker believes that Washington's behaviour can be explained by the fact that it's now caught between two allies. We have what appears to be a somewhat intractable contradiction between the U.S. interest in Syria and the U.S. interest in NATO. And so this is something that they're trying to find a way out of, but it's very difficult, given the fact that uh, it was the United States, along with Turkey, Saudi Arabia, France, Britain, which caused the destabilization of Syria and led to the present circumstances. And the United States, on the other hand, is tied in with the YPG forces inside Syria, who have been the main fighting forces that the U.S. has been allied with in the battle against ISIS. But more than that, uh, to maintain a U.S. presence inside Syria, which the U.S. military has been declaring is there for indefinitely.